Here we go. Great. Thanks, everybody, so much for joining us today, taking the time to meet our candidates so you can make an informed decision in our upcoming RIA Board of Directors election. I'm Colleen Duran, the COO at RIA, and I'm joined by Katie Smith, RIA's President and CEO of PHC Restoration. Today's session will be recorded and available for viewing on our website for those who can't join us live. The RIA board consists of 13 at-large members and one strategic appointed member. This year, we have two open at-large seats and six candidates on the ballot. Election voting will open by mid-March and all RIA member voting representatives will receive their ballots electronically via email. We strongly encourage our members to exercise their voice by participating in the election process. We're going to present two candidates to you today in alphabetical order by last name. Each candidate will be asked the same questions in the same order and have a few minutes to answer each one. The candidates we have today are Matthew Preston of Servpro Corporate Headquarters and John Vogt of Mammoth Restoration. Now I'm going to turn it over to RA's president, Katie Smith. Thank you, Colleen. And now is also a great time to say thank you to the nominating committee for their service to the RIA on this initiative. Some of them are sitting in on the call today, so we want to say thanks for being here. The people that you'll meet in this session have been vetted by the nominating committee and presented as candidates who are willing, able, and qualified to serve on the RIA board. As a reminder, the RIA's mission is to educate, advocate, and elevate the industry. We are the voice of the restoration industry. And as members of the RIA, we have a duty to elect board members who will represent the restore and speak for our best interests and help us set the direction of the future of the RIA. Your, vo your vote matters. Yesterday, we met our first four candidates and I'm pleased to present the remaining two today. First up, we have Matthew Preston from Servpro Corporate Headquarters. Welcome, Matt, how are you today? Good, Katie, how are you? Thank you for having me here. Thank you. I uh, hope you're ready because question number one is coming up for you. Here we go. Sure. All right. Tell us a little bit about your background in the restoration industry and your company and your current role in your organization. We'd love to hear how you believe your experience prepares you to serve as a member of RIA's board of directors. Happy to do so. So I've been with Surpro Industries here in Nashville, Tennessee area for just a little over 10 years now, since 2012. Uh, I serve in the role as chief legal officer, but I'm responsible for all risk-related matters, government affairs, public affairs, and the like. Um, so so um, I think, you know, from, from a contribution standpoint, my primary area is advocacy, government affairs, and legislative, although I've got pretty significant experience working with, with a number of different boards and hope that I can continue to, uh, to add to what the RAA board uh, has been doing so far. Um, with really with more than 2000 franchises at this point, the Surpro system, uh, we have a pretty good visibility across a, a wide range of, of the restoration spectrum from, from residential to the large commercial platforms. I think that's real helpful because it, it allows us to see a lot of issues that are emerging out there and then bring those issues to the forefront. I think that's been uh, real helpful the last couple of years when I've been a member of the RA board to talk about these uh, kind of an early warning system. And that's something that uh, I feel strongly about. Um, in, in my past, I was uh, with Yum Brands, KFC Taco Bell and Pizza Hut, where I did uh, a lot of work in the legislative front and worked heavily with the trade associations in our industry, the National Restaurant Association and the like. And it was, it was great because while by day we, we were in competition with the Wendy's and the McDonald's and the Burger Kings, by, by night we were very much united uh, to, to advance and protect uh, issues that impacted the industry as a whole. I think that really is the, the mission of, of the RIA as, as I see it. Um, I, I believe that a, a strong and engaged uh, trade association is extremely important to an industry. Um, we can all come together collaboratively, not as competitors. I've seen that over the last two years in my, in my, in my time on the RIA board, um, again, to advance and protect the industry. I've also been privileged over the, the last year to chair the Legislative uh, Affairs Task Force for the AGA to try to get out in front of some of these le legislative and regulatory efforts that we're seeing across the various states. Uh, this year has been an active year already with over 50 state legislatures in, in, in session, and we've begun to identify those issues. And the goal is to bring those to the forefront of all the RAA members so they can comment on them and know, what, know what's coming their way in, in, their, in their various areas. 
so I think that's that's about it from a uh, just a background standpoint. Okay, sounds good. Question number two: Looking ahead at the next three to five years, what issues or challenges do you consider to be the most important facing the restoration industry? That's a great question. Um, it's something we spend a lot of time on here, believe it or not. Um, sometimes I feel like we're trying to be futurists, vision, you know, vision forward to see where we're going to be in three to five years and how we can plan to get there. Um, you know, one of the most interesting things about the RIA is that it's made up of, of restorers of all types and sizes. And that's been a real eye opener and a really great thing for me to see. You know, in, in the past, I thought of things as small and large, but that's not really true. We have our independence, we have our systems, we have our affiliations. So, so it's been really great to, to meet a bunch of people across all those areas and to share information. Um, we're all part of the same restoration ecosystem and these, these issues and challenges are gonna impact all of us, maybe in different, in different ways and in, in, in different measures, but we're all gonna have to address the things that are coming at us. Um, we at Surpro have a great appreciation and respect for everybody in the industry. Uh, that's something that I've learned when I came here 10 years ago. We don't look at ourselves as anything special. We look at ourselves as another set of restorers with a great system of independently owned franchises. And you know, our job is to help them succeed in doing what they do in their business. But let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges that I think we're, we, that we believe we're seeing coming forward down the road. First, and I don't know that this is a challenge or an opportunity, but I think we've all seen a significant consolidation uh, in, in the restoration industry. A lot of it are around private equity backed um, entities. There, there, it's no secret that uh, a lot of independents have, have become part of systems. And, and we're seeing even in our, in our franchise system, uh, a pretty significant consolidation of, of, of owners um, over the last, call it three to five years. I think it's something that's gonna continue to, to happen. So the fragmentation is becoming less in our industry and it's creating larger players out there, honestly. So I think everybody has to be aware of what that looks like and what that means and portends for the industry in the future. Um, the next big area, and we talked about this several weeks ago when we had the RIA uh, Strategic Bet Board planning session uh, here at Surpro, we we're happy to host that, is really the rise of technology. You know, it, what we've seen over the last three to five years has been nothing less than dramatic in this industry. And, and it just continues to change every day. Everything from Matterport to DocuSketch to XTR, it's just, it's mind boggling, candidly. And, and one of the things we committed to doing, I believe, at, at that meeting was to, to pull a group together and really try to figure out what this industry is gonna look like from a technology standpoint in three years, and then paint that vision backwards so we can begin to plan for that and, and really get keep the members informed as to what's out there. Because I know I certainly, uh, and this is not my area of expertise, but I find it to be very confusing personally and, and any help that I can receive from, from the RA would be great. Um, third area is just the, the rise of regulation and legislation that affects our industry. You know, we're not fast food, we're not tobacco and we're not liquor, but I'm seeing more and more every year interference. And I should, I, I don't use that word lightly, but interference in, in, in the, restore a business model out there. And it's, it's changing the way people have to do business um, in a lot of different categories, whether it's mold or pesticide application, consumer fraud, home, home improvement rules, contractor rules. Uh, we really have to get out in front of those and pick the ones that are important enough to advocate on, on behalf of the industry through the RIA. Um, and, then, and then really, I'll, I'll, the final one I'm gonna note is, you, know, you can quarrel whether or not we're in a period of climate change uh, our global warming, but you, you can't really argue with the fact that we've seen some pretty dramatic changes in weather patterns. And I'm, I'm, if I had to guess, I'd say that's gonna continue, which means storm is gonna be a way of the future. And, and the ability for, for people to mobilize and to provide storm capacity support in areas that are traditionally impacted by cat events is gonna come become huge. We're certainly seeing it, and I'm hearing it from a lot of uh, our brethren in the field. So those are the areas I think uh, pr present some challenges and opportunities in the future. All right, excellent points. And your final question, number three, how do you think RIA can positively improve the restoration industry both now and into the future? Well, again, uh, you said it early on, Katie, it's about being the voice of the industry in so many different ways, whether it's training or it's advocacy. Uh, there's a place for everybody to be involved here. Everybody, I think, has their, their areas, their niches that they prefer to, to work within. As I mentioned early in my, my piece here, for me, it's the advocacy and the legislative piece of this. I think there's a huge opportunity to shape this industry going forward and not be shaped by forces that are out there. That to me is the, is the great challenge. Um, so I think continued industry advocacy that we've seen through the AGA, some fantastic work on pricing, 
and, and in other areas uh, through the position papers, which I can tell you a number of our franchises have found to be very helpful uh, in using, uh, you know, in day to day with consultants and TPAs. I think that's a very important area to continue on a selective basis, finding the areas of the greatest impact. And, and the second area really is government and regulatory affairs, identifying the issues out there that really impact us, prioritize those, those issues, and then decide what resources we're gonna put up against them to try to uh, advocate and persuade and, and, and shape what it looks like at the state and local level going forward. Excellent points, Matt, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to our final candidate, uh, John Vogt, representing Mammoth Restoration. Hello, John. How are you today? Hey, how are you? Good, and thank you for being here. We're going to go ahead and get started with question number one for you. Tell us a little bit about your background in the restoration industry, your company, and your current role in your organization. We'd love to hear how you believe your experience prepares you to serve as a member of RIA's board of directors. Yeah, so uh, I ended up staying in Pennsylvania after college and uh, some way somehow fell into the restoration industry and it's really hard to believe it's been 20 years now and the the first stint if you will was with a franchise system for many many years and that uh, that franchise or our franchises actually ended up being acquired so I went through an acquisition great learning experience uh, and now I'm back on the you know private side with Mammoth Restoration, where I serve as president. Uh, we do have eight locations and more slated to open by year end. But my major focus and drive is the commercial side of our business, large and complex loss. So we're continuously building that out, which allows me to share experiences of hey how. How do we do this? What's needed? What can I learn from others? And then making sure that we're hiring right, which leads me into what can I do to better serve the RIA and recruiting and retrain, uh, I'm sorry, retaining is a big, big key. If we do not have solid teammates uh, that we are able to retain that churn, that industry churn doesn't allow for a a smooth operation, quite frankly. So we need to make sure that we're hiring right. I can help with that uh, business development, the business development side of things. And I would take that into how can we secure additional vendors and have those vendors offer better pricing to other RIA contractors. And most importantly, gain interest from other individuals that don't even know what the restoration industry was. I mean, heck, I look back at it and say, I had no idea that this industry even existed. And with the right people, we're gonna get there. And some of my best success stories, they're not jobs that I've worked on. They're not uh, you know, certain things that I've done inside of the industry, whether it be training, different certifications, it's watching the people that I work with grow. and. Some of those people to this day, I still work with, which is fantastic. So that's that's the end of question one for me. Awesome, thank you. Question number two, looking ahead at the next three to five years, what issues or challenges do you consider to be the most important facing the restoration industry? Okay, so I am not a technology guy, um, but technology I think is gonna be something that we're, we're all going to be faced with, and I think it's going to be a challenge. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, Matterport or DocuSketch. I'm actually talking about artificial intelligence and automation and taking estimates that get put in through automation and reviewed with a series of algorithms and then spit out an approved estimate. Now, is that estimate going to be solid or is it is it not? And yes, it might speed up the review process, but it might actually delay in getting the project started because the contractor might not be able to perform the work for that price. And sometimes we're associated with the insurance company. So naturally the customer at times will get frustrated with a contractor when in fact the delay happens to be on the other side. So really it takes a human element out of things and the the customer experience just um, 
diminishes, all but diminishes, right? So this predictive modeling, I think is going to be a problem and we're all gonna have to get aligned and trained in order to combat some of the challenges that I think this is gonna bring. Absolutely. Question number three, how do you think RIA can positively improve the restoration industry both now and into the future? Okay, so you're gonna hear me mention education. Um, I'm actually passionate about education, but I think there's a gap right now in three areas. I think there's a gap between the contractor and the carrier. And what I mean by that is we're always, um, th th it seems like there's a reduction at times. Okay, can you reduce your bill? Or uh, maybe, maybe the carrier just doesn't understand what needs to be put into an estimate. And then we have that opportunity to train and coach and make sure the adjusters now are in better alignment with the contractor. So I think that's number one. Number two, building consultants. A lot of times I hear other contractors say, oh man, I don't wanna work with building consultants because they cut our bill. It's actually one of my largest referral sources and it has allowed us to meet new adjusters and gain more business. So if we're setting the expectations up front, making sure that we're working with them, the claim's gonna get settled on the back end faster and the contractor is gonna receive payment. Uh, last but not least, the contractors at times working against one another. And I, I bring this up and I feel as though at times it's a rat race who is going to give the next best discounts, okay, to become a preferred vendor for a new TPA that's starting. Um, that just screams to me, we're allowing an industry, meaning the insurance industry, to dictate how we run our businesses. And we want to be able to say, no, we, we need to be saying, okay, I understand that you would like this discount. However, here are the necessary items that we know we always need. So if we gain alignment there, we're gonna be in a better spot. And then number two, on top of this, overall alignment and helping when there's a cat event. You know, We wanna be able to call on other companies that are like-minded that can help us out. So let's face it, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. There is plenty of work out there. And if we help one another, it's going to show that we're not just those contractors out there because sometimes contractors don't have the best name. So I think alignment at the end of the day is going to get us to where we need to be. And if we put all of that together and we as the RIA help drive that, I think sky's the limit. Thank you. All right, Matt, John, you both did a great job. Thank you for your time today, for your willingness to participate in this um, event. I think both of you made some great points and I know all of us enjoy getting to know you a little bit better. Um, I think all six of our candidates uh, did a phenomenal job, which makes an already competitive election even more difficult for our voters. So I want to remind everyone that re the results of the election will be announced during our town hall at our annual convention in Orlando, April 24th through the 26th. So if you haven't registered, do so today by visiting convention.restorationindustry.org. Thanks for tuning in and be on the lookout for your ballots to arrive via email mid-March. We'll see you in Orlando. Bye.